This is truth be told. That not only are there reptilians here. New evidence of UFO fleets. We were close to nuclear war. To help you transform so that you can live your highest truth. We're not being told just because we're not ready for it. Geostations stations of frequency, vibrational. The, uh, I was a homicide detective with LAPD. UFOs increase. Um, visitations. You ever wanted to know about what dreams really mean? I mean, I've had dreams that I'm like, what the heck was that? Today, I want to welcome you to another episode of Truth Be Told. I'm your host, Tony Sweet, where we're going to unlock the secrets of your dreams with Teresa Chung, author of the revised the dream dictionary from a to z dreams those mysterious narratives of the night have puzzled us for centuries with teresa's expertise we're exploring the meaning behind the symbols that visit us in our sleep and how they connect to our waking lives from why we're dreaming of cats to significance of flying and her book is your go-to guide for decoding your subconscious plus we'll touch on how modern symbols like social media are influencing our dreams ever curious about what your dreams are telling you well today we're going to find out i'm your host tony sweet please welcome to the truth be told studios for the second time author teresa chunk welcome back i'm excited to have you back how you doing i'm like a recurring dream aren't i i know (laughs) Well, you're, I'm a recurring nightmare. You're a recurring, recurring <laughs> dream. So that <laughs> that's what my mom used to say. Your intuition, because we were rescheduling this, weren't we? And we were. Just, and I thought he must know it's World Sleep Day today. Look at that World Sleep Day. And I didn't even know about it. So I'm excited. I think it you're was meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm excited here for the people that are joining us at the beginning, and I'll reintroduce uh, Teresa after a while, just in case more people pop in. If you have questions about dreams, please pop them in in uh, the chat room. We would love to hear about your dreams, and I know Sherry in the chat room is uh, excited about your books, and and I'm sure she'll have some questions. So, um, please, if you have questions, um, I would love to hear about it and i'm sure Teresa will too so oh well Teresa, since it is world sleep day like you said everybody dreams a lot of people they remember their dreams very vividly and then there's some people like "Mm, i don't really dream uh that's not necessarily true no well let's start recalling it you just brain scans show that we dream at least five or six times every single night Think of that over the course of our lives, the thousands and thousands of dreams and precious insights from our inner world that we're missing, you know, if we don't recall them. You've just got in the habit of forgetting them. But That's why all. Why is that some people remember? Because I'm, I'm not a, I, my memory's terrible. I, I, but I do remember dreams a lot. Um, and then there's sometimes I don't. Why is it sometimes there's nights that we remember dreams and why... Some nights we don't. It's when the dreaming mind is screaming louder for your attention. Uh, I mean, you remember them for a reason and mm-hmm. you forget them for a reason. Um, I, I believe it all happens for a reason to risk repeating myself. But um, we don't recall our dreams typically because our waking life has got very overcrowded, mm-hmm. a bit too rational and logical. And also because we're harking back to our childhood, maybe when we were taught dreams don't matter, dreams have no meaning, mm-hmm. our school days when we were taught that they were random firings of the brain. All this conditioning is very hard for the dreaming mind to break through. Hmm. And sometimes we go back to that, you know, especially when our life is um, is very busy. It typically when our life is a bit more relaxed and we're a bit more mellow, that those dreams tend to tend to filter through. And I actually find they're a sign of well-being, actually, because if you are recalling your dreams, it shows that you're getting some part of your life right. You're getting that balance between the material and the intuitive that is the key, the recipe to a happy life, because it's when both those aspects of ourselves are balanced and in harmony that we feel fulfilled. And often we feel unhappy or empty or drained when one aspect of ourselves 
typically our materialistic side, you know, the ego, the fear, right. the doubt and all that dominates. And you need to balance it with the intuition, the creativity, the empathy and compassion. And that's what dream work does. It's all about bringing that balance, essential balance for your well-being back into your life. Did being an intuitive psychic medium, um, did that help with interpreting dreams? Uh, because dreams are so random. And like you said, you, you, you know, uh, you see a cat that chases you with a knife and you're like, what, what does that mean? I mean, how do you, how do you start interpreting dreams at the beginning, um, as a dream interpreter? There is method in the madness of every <laughs> single dream. I'm telling you, your dreams are art, poetry, and you have to interpret your dream in the same way that you would interpret a wonderful work of art that when you look at it the first time doesn't quite make sense. Right. Some works of art are more easier to make sense of than others, especially that modern art, which has gone really, really symbolic and everything. But that's really how you interpret your, your dreams, just as if you are going to interpret a poem. You are given a poem, and on first reading, it's like, this poem makes no <laughs> right. sense at all. We've all had that at school. Some mm -hmm. of us loved poetry analysis. Others hated it, <laughs> again, partly because we were encouraged when we were when we when we analyze poems we have to tap into that symbolic metaphorical language which is the language of the soul that's how the soul speaks to us it doesn't speak in our language it doesn't speak literally i don't know why <laughs> but the language of the unconscious is the language of the dreaming world and it speaks in symbols metaphors associations and you basically have to learn that dream speak to understand your dreams and it's much much easier than you think people think oh my goodness that's like learning another language <laughs> it isn't it's simplest language in the world because it was our human language you know centuries ago we all thought in symbols and metaphors that looked beneath the surface for deeper meaning that's that's in our dna <laughs> thinking like that but we seem to have lost touch with that ability to not just see something literally but to look the, the layers beneath and that's where all the meaning and insight and illumination is found. Dreams are not literal. But then again, dreams love to surprise us. Right. <laughs> and there are occasionally dreams that are literal. Um, as soon as you think you've defined a dream, it will evade you again. And that's why <laughs> I love dream work. You can, you can think, I've got it sorted. You know, I've got my set of rules for dream work. And then a dream will come along to throw all the rule, tear up the rule book. Your dreams are your ultimate inner rebel. But, you know, you can't, there are some generalizations, and that's what I talk about in my books, ways to decode your dreams. And first of all, think like an artist and think like a poet. And if you say, well, I'm not creative, I'm not artistic, I'm not poetic. Yes, you are, because you dream. And every night you create a portrait, you create a poem in your mind. Sometimes you recall that in the morning. So just write it down and then look at it as if you were a, a analyzing a poem or a work of art. That's my basic advice for everyone listening. Um, and you will find it yields incredible insights. If you say, I don't know how to think symbolically. Yes, you do. You just go say a word. You mentioned a cat. Everybody, when I say the word cat, will have an instinctive reaction or a thought or a word or a feeling or a memory. That's the meaning of a cat if it appears in your dream, your personal right. association. You go for your first association, what's the first word that you think of when a symbol in a dream appears. That's how you interpret dreams and you start understanding each of these dream symbols in that way. It doesn't happen overnight. It can take mm. several weeks to learn to speak that language, but after a while you will begin to get the hang of it and it is bliss then because you can see how your dreaming mind is constantly, sometimes laughing at your waking life, sometimes commenting, sometimes guiding, sometimes foreshadowing, but always trying to raise you up in some way. The dreaming mind is your champion, really. Sometimes it uses shocking, disturbing, nightmarish symbols, hmm. simply because it wants you to remember them when you wake up, because it's tried in other ways to get a message across and you've just forgotten it. But always, if it uses tough love, it does it because it wants you to evolve. 
Your dreaming mind is your inner therapist, your best friend, your champion. And if people could start thinking of their dreams in that way, instead of thinking of the, the dreams as other and separate or fear, things to be feared, that's a huge block to dream work. The first thing I try to do is to make people think that their dreams are their best friend. Hmm. And, friends, and friends don't lie, or true friends don't lie, to quote Stranger Things. Think of your dreams that way. They're the most honest friend and companion you will have throughout your entire life. They will never leave you either. They will always be there. Well, I I know a lot of people. I, I'm not a big modern art person. You know, the... Uh, you walk in, and I remember going to Brazil, and we went to a modern arts museum, and yeah. it was a bunch of globes with yeah. stickers on it. And I was like, I I don't get it. I don't get the appeal of trying to really work your mind of trying to figure out what the artist means, where, you know, like old, old art, you know, that you can walk in and you see a portrait of a of a king or something that uh, you're like that's very much my style i just like very blunt this is who the person is you can kind of see their style and their facial expressions or whatever it is dream is that i think in that way too where a right right brain left brain person so a, a right brain person might not quite understand maybe look at a dream as i i look at modern art how how does one when you say oh but you are you'd have that capability of looking at your dream as art or as a poem how, how what would you suggest for that right brain person to to open up a little bit more to to instead of saying uh you know speak like falling i you know i was fell off a cliff well to me that was that was very traumatic it was danger it was um uh you know something that was going to feel like it's haunting me all day long because i had this dream about falling but in your world <laughs> what what would that mean and how does a person really kind of start understanding the meaning of it instead of just this yes, literal that's, fall that's well, the first roadblock we covered to dream work is not remembering them. Yeah. And as I said, I, I can talk later about some hints and tips to, to kickstart that. That'd be that great. Dream the second roadblock is, of course, when you do remember them, you don't know what they mean. And you just <laughs> think this is ridiculous. Right. Um, but to quote, quote the godfather of dream interpretation, Freud, the crazier the dream the more profound the meaning. So start from that. So if you have an absolutely bonkers scenario in your dreams, think, oh my goodness, this is going to be really profound. Approach it in that way. And just pick out a couple of symbols. People try to analyze every single aspect of their dreaming, of their dream, but their dream sometimes is so rich and there's so many, so much in it. Just pick out two or three key symbols and work with that. That is enough. Just choose the symbols that you're instinctively drawn to. They, You are instinctively drawn to them for a reason. Or if you don't want symbols, choose a storyline or a sensation or a feeling from that dream. Write mm. it down. Then just sit there quietly and think about the first thing that comes into your mind, the first association with that symbol. And it, it will come, trust me, it will come. And write that down. And the same for the other two symbols and then start working with that and thinking about these key words that I'm writing down, how are they commenting on or helping me in my waking life? What do I need to learn from them? How can I apply some of this perspective my dreaming mind is giving? Because that's what a dream does. It gives you a new perspective on situations in your current, dreams are current, waking life. And it does this to get you to think outside the box and to think about things in a different way, to open your mind hmm. and to remind you that, you know, there's more to you than meets the eye and there's a way forward here, right? Right. It, and as I said, if you keep doing that, it's very, very simple. You will, after a while, astonish yourself with your inner inner wisdom. And, and you said you liked more traditional art but even 
traditional art. I recently did a talk actually about the Mona Lisa. Everybody thinks what a simple, beautiful picture. I asked the people there, all of them had a very different interpretation of that enigmatic smile. Mm. Because they were coming from a different perspective. All of them started questioning why the choice of colour, the background, even with traditional paintings, which we think are so easy to interpret, they are not. They have millions, millions of different interpretations that you can bring into it. Now, modern art takes it much more, in a way, modern art is more basic. It just goes right basic to hardcore symbolism. I was at the Tate Modern recently here in London, and you know, you do see things like a hairbrush stuck on the wall. <laughs> You're like, with a bit what? Of banana skin <laughs> and gum. Yeah. That's a dream, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's so... just dreamt that, like Salvador Dal. Right. His, his artwork is photographs of his dream, of, of his dreams. He, he admits that that's how he gets the inspiration. Oh, wow. You know, and anyone here who wants to, to sort of like trigger a dream, just go and study Salvador Dal's persistence of memory, hmm. which is all about the timeless states that we enter in the dream. That's, that, that's, that's such a timeless dream photograph, isn't it? Um, another, another tip, actually, if you wake up with a dream, you don't make sense, draw it. Hmm. You know, you don't have to be a, a talented artist in right. waking life. Just draw it. <laughs> and see what it starts triggering. Ask questions. Like if you dreamt of a hairbrush, talk to that hairbrush and say, what do you want to tell me beyond I need to go to the hairdresser? <laughs> there must be something else. Look, brushing your hair, think about it. Hair is a sign of vitality. In biblical times, it was a sign of power. Is that the association you have? You're brushing it, means maybe you need to fine tune what you're doing, be more assertive, all these things. Start asking yourself questions because if you've ever been to therapy or counseling in your life, you will find that the therapist or counselor doesn't tell you what to think or do. They will ask you questions about yourself and get you to come up with your own salvation, as it were. Your dreaming mind does that for free every night. Mm. It's encouraging you to ask questions about your precious waking life, what you're thinking what you're feeling and what you're doing. And if those three things, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions are optimum for your well-being, right? That's what it's asking you. It's asking you to really think about your thoughts, feelings, your mindset, and your actions, what you're doing. And if those aren't particularly healthy or good for you, your dreaming mind will send a barrage of anxiety themes mm. and in a criticism, in a way, to get you to lose that mindset, that perspective, which is holding you back. I firmly believe that every dream is really encouraging you to shed something, let go of something that no longer serves you. Um, certainly for anxiety and nightmare right. dreams. And and it's, it's fascinating, actually, that I think over 90% of people's dreams are anxiety-themed showing that a lot of us have a lot to let go of, wow. a lot of conditioning, a lot of the expectations of others, a lot of mindsets um, that are not positive for us, a lot of self-talk in a chatter that is draining. And your dreaming mind is shining the nightlight directly on those in a symbolic, poetic, visionary way. Hmm. Think, you know, that, that, that wonderful uh, portrait of the screen Think about what, how evocative that is. I'm sure we've all had <laughs> dreams and nightmares like that. You know, you're screaming and nobody's hearing. It's, it's symbolizing something. So if you have that kind of imagery in your dream, the clear message is you need to speak your truth. You need to be more assertive. You, your voice needs to be heard because at the moment it's being drowned out. Probably, as is often the case, by the expectations of others. Hmm. I love that. Yeah, I uh, I find it fascinating when you mentioned, uh, like in traditional um, art, uh, about the colors. Um, Why? Why the choice of colors? Yeah, there's a debate there, um, because colors in dreams all have meanings as well. Sometimes, if you do dream in color, because some people just dream in black, black and, and white. white yeah. Um, if you do dream in color. Maybe forget the story and the actual symbol. Focus on the colors. If there was a lot of yellow in your dream, go and research the meaning 
of the word yellow, first of all, your own personal association must come first. But then after that, you can go and search the archetypal, the common, the generic um, associations, hmm. the spiritual meanings, the mysticism of the color yellow, and then apply it to your waking life, your current waking life, what you're thinking, feeling and doing. How can you learn from the color yellow right now? Does it mean to have more courage? Does it mean to be more creative in something you're doing? So bring the message of the symbol or the color hmm. into your waking life. It's your teacher. It's trying to show you something. And that kind of goes to I that I can remember, my even my own dreams. I, it, I don't really focus on the color, which I probably should start doing that, but... I feel like I dream a lot in at night or it's darker not and I I remember some dreams that it's during the day and it's bright but I feel like I dream a lot at night not in my dreams at night but the the dream is in yeah. in darker at night what is that that symbolism of no, of it's your world isn't it because yeah. you explore the shadow what is unknown mm. about this life. So your dreaming mind is reflecting where your attention is in your waking life, which is all about uncovering the truth. Look, truth be told, the title of your your. And podcast. I'm a Sagittarius seeker of truth. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and that's what you do. So your dreaming mind, your dreaming mind does comment on your waking life in a symbolic way. But also it could be about, you know, there's a huge trend online now at the moment, shadow work mm -hmm. and understanding that the shadow is the power right. because a shadow can't be created without a source of light. You are that source of light. But it's in the shadows, the darkness that things grow and that we learn. This is all the things that are outside of our comfort zone wow. where where that's the only way to progress in life is to dig deep there and to not criticize it or condemn it or deny it, but to acknowledge it, understand it, have compassion for it and then let it go or, or not act on it in your waking life. Um, shadow work is, is a major part of therapy, as people know, who've ever gone into therapy that working with the shadow side and accepting that there are aspects of yourself hmm. which you have repressed because it was deemed unacceptable um by your parents and carers or teachers right. and your friends or colleagues but we all have these I, I hate to say negative sort of deeper impulses within us and they're all trying to teach us something. Like if you feel jealous or envious or angry, angry or hateful or fearful, there's a lesson there. Learn that lesson. Talk to the dark symbols in your dreams. Because most of the time, these negative impulses within us actually grew up from good intentions. They grew up to protect us hmm. from you know, criticism right. or being neglected or not loved or not being noticed, which is what a child wants. So we often, you know, bury these things with good intentions, um, but they haven't gone away and they want to be acknowledged. They're hmm. screaming for a bit of love and compassion and understanding. And often once you give them that, once you turn and face the monsters that are chasing you, they lose their power. It's when you deny or run away from the shadow side, that's when the problems come. And it's interesting that one increasingly in the top five dreams around the world, being chased is one of them. Yeah. I think we've all had those scenarios of oh, something's yeah. chasing us and we don't know what it is. And that is our darkest, deepest fears, the aspects of ourself that are not socially acceptable. Um and which we need to stop denying and just understand and have a little bit of compassion for and understand it's just like there's night and there's day within us there's shadow and there's light hmm. and to to let the shadow actually fuel the light because the shadow the darkness the difficult aspects of ourselves they are actually what can give us that energy that will to succeed that drive um because if every if we were 100% light as often you see in new age movements it's like you can never have a negative thought 
there's going to be no progress then hmm. if everything happened to you so easily and life was just safe and you joyful all the time there would be no progress and i don't know why we're here on this planet but i do think learning and growing has something to do with it and dreams are here to help us learn and grow they are the light when all other lights go out to wow. quote lord of the rings <laughs> love it no i i totally agree and i think um if you look at it that way it's not as scary um uh, but would you mind taking some uh, questions from the chat room? I'd love to, love to. Yes, please. Perfect. All right. So uh, there's some questions there, but people that uh, would like to ask a question, please put in uh, the chat chat room uh, and I'll ask directly from you. So I uh, say, which book have you been, has been your favorite so far? of your of your oh, book that's like asking to choose between children right right <laughs> they, when i write them they're always my favorite and i think yes and then i go on to the next one i'm very much like that um but there are some that stand out the dream dictionary of course i have great affection for simply because as an author to have a book constantly reissued i wrote it now 2005 the first time and it just keeps reinventing itself with new edition after new edition. And, and that, I guess, to forgive the pun, but the dreaming mind loves puns, um, <laughs> is a dream come true for an author. So my dream dictionary, um, I guess, has that place in my heart. But I also really enjoyed the premonition code where I would got the um, privilege of working with a lady that you probably know, Dr. Julia Mossbridge. She's the precognition, one of the world's leading experts in pre-sentiment precognition which is sensing the future through bodily wisdom, your gut and your heart, et cetera, but also through your dreams. And um, that was a baptism by fire working with a neuroscientist and suddenly having my book uh, reviewed in uh, scientific journals <laughs> 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 because of the collaboration, because it was someone coming from a spiritual background right. and someone <laughs> coming from neuroscience. So that one has a special place in my heart, but the, the third one, I can have three wishes, like three dreams. My third <laughs> one is empower your inner psychic, which um, I guess I love that the most because it's the most recent statement of where I am at in my thinking um, in the area of dreams and psychic development and growth, because I have been writing close to three decades. And when I, I look back actually at my early books, they were my Sunday Times books where I collected together angel stories and dreams coming true stories there's a kind of touching naivety about them um and they are they are beautiful because of that but of course we all grow up and evolve and i've been tested by skeptics uh, working with academics working with scientists and so empower your inner psychic really is my most up-to-date book of where i am what it's like working with scientists and neuroscientists researching consciousness, where dream work is. And I put it into a series of five steps to help people connect with their inner psychic. Um, and one of those ways, of course, is through dreams, because I believe dreams are the entry point to your psychic powers. Because yeah. people who say they're not psychic or they've never had a psychic experience, I said, well, you must remember a dream. There you go. You're psychic. What on earth is going on there? You're asleep, aren't you? Your ego, your logic, and your reason yeah. are asleep. But some part of you is very, very active, creating a story to rival Netflix. You know, <laughs> uh, it really is. I mean, sometimes the stories, and please, everybody listening, write down your dreams. You do not know they might be the next great novel or movie or perfume or game or invention. I mean, there's a book waiting to be there. I'm sure it's been written about all the remarkable developments in the world that have been inspired by a vision in a dream. I and mean, with books, you have Mary Shelley's, Shelley's Frankenstein. Stephen King is open about the fact that many of the plots of his greatest selling books are dream inspired. Christopher Nolan, who recently won Oppenheimer, he is a vivid dreamer and mm. I love his inception, which came to him in a dream because he was realizing he could lucid dream, which is knowing he's dreaming when he's dreaming. And he wanted to explore that. <laughs> but you can see in all his movies, Christopher Nolan, this dreamlike dominance. 
Um, he's a very interesting guy, actually, because he won't use a mobile phone. And that's one way, actually, to increase your dream recall. I tell people, please, in the morning, stay away from your phone. And at night, at least an hour before you go to bed, stay away from your phone. Technology, the the light from the phone. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, I mean, creativity <laughs> inspired by dreams. Um it, it, it's it's incredible. I've lost the plot now. I often do that. I go on a tangent. It's like, okay. Oh. No, you're you're doing great. Uh, I answered your question. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, no, we were talking about the, your favorite book and. Uh, oh gosh, sorry, and I'm still rambling on. But it's like a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream because you can get that as well. Can't oh you? yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, uh, in fact, uh, Sherry was at. This was kind of a reoccurring dream that she had. She said. Uh, she goes, recurring a dream the last year or so about not being able to, to get back home. I'm somewhere without a car or a phone to get call somebody, uh, someone for help. This dream is terrible since I've, I've become uh, stuck in a walker. For, and she is in real life disabled, has to use a walker. And I'm stuck somewhere with uh, without a way home. Um, so she, she, I guess that's kind of feeling that is re commenting on your current, current waking circumstances yeah. but it's also a source of remarkable comfort and hope because it's showing you in your dream world you are you know very alive and you're conscious that you want to reconnect to who you truly are regardless of what's happening in your body and the external worlds that inner child that inner light whatever happens to you in the external world the waking world you want to get back to that this is a really positive dream and what i'd love you to do this is a technique that research has shown work is in the daydreaming state if that's possible to close your eyes and go back into that dream and imagine you do find your way back home. Rescript the dream because people don't think dreams happen to them. Hmm. But I'm going to tell you now, dreams are created by you, for you. They are actually created by you. You are the director, you just don't realize it. So if you could set the intention before you go to sleep tonight or any night when you feel like doing it to say, this time when I dream, I'm going to find my way home and see what I discover there. Because in your home, you will probably find a lot of hidden messages about what can bring you great harmony and fulfillment right now. But first of all, celebrate the fact that your dreaming mind is on the case and it wants you to find your inner power, regardless of what difficulties you are facing in your waking life and that really is what gives all life meaning isn't it um there are several things in life which give ourselves meaning one of those is work mm -hmm. but sometimes work can disappear or not fulfill us or be taken away or physical limitations can stop you working the second thing is relationships they can make give your life meaning caring and loving for others Sadly, sometimes relationships don't work out. There's bereavement, there's loss, divorce, whatever. The third thing, the key, is your relationship with your inner world. Nobody can take that away from you. Hmm. Nothing that happens in the world outside can take away your inner power. And your dream is reminding you of that night after night after night. Once you understand that, you can then start directing that inner power a little bit in the daydreaming state or through dream incubation and experiencing your full potential in the dream state. And I'm telling you, when you're able to do that, it's magic when you wake up. You just know that you are. there's more to you than your body and this material life. You just know that you are infinite potential. Um, and you're, please keep writing down your dreams. Keep trying to incubate dreams that give you, give you answers. Keep loving your dreams, learning their lessons. And I'm telling you, it will give you a mighty confidence boost 
from the inside out. And it's that inside out approach to life which dreams champion. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing for us, isn't it? That inner world. Because everything else is transient. Mm -hmm. Everything else you haven't really got control over. We think we have control over work and relationships and what goes on in our life. We don't really. You know, we really don't. What you have control over, though, is what's going on within you. And your dreaming mind wants you to make that relationship with yourself so strong that you are unstoppable. <laughs> I love it. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to tell you this, uh, Louise, her next one. I'm going to, I want to see if you don't mind it. I'm going to try to interpret it and see if I, I'm coming close. I'm sure you will because you are intuitive. Oh, intuitive. thank you. Uh, so it says, I'm always, I always dream I'm about to get hit by a car and move out of the way just before the car hits. I think that means my life is a car crash. I I'm going to interpret it as this Good. that you <laughs> are that no no I I think that you're very innovative, you are very creative enough to get yourself out of any tough situation and you should be proud of yourself for seeing things coming in time even if it's right before it hits you. Um so what I mean, that's my quick version of an interpretation. But what do you think? I love this, Tony. First of all, I think there are many, many elements, almost all of that, that I would wholeheartedly agree with. And that's why I encourage actually people to interpret someone else's dreams, because your instinct when you wanted to interpret that dream was to be positive, mm -hmm. to lift the person up. Because you're aware that you're dealing with something sacred on a soul level. So you wanted to lift up. And actually, that's a really good exercise. We need to do that ourselves when we mm -hmm. interpret. Always go for the most positive, energy-raising interpretation. I would wholeheartedly agree with that. The only thing I'd potentially add is that if a car's coming at you, it should suggest something unexpected may be happening in your waking life right now, which is knocking you, because potentially could knock you for six. And it's giving you a heads up to be prepared, to be better prepared for something unexpected that's outside your control. And again, to stay your course, that's all that I would I would add. Um, but are you walking in the dream or are you stationary? So Lu Louise, put that uh, in the chat room and see, are you walking or are you stationary? And so let's see if she can respond to that. Because movement in dreams and vehicles is the direction in life. Right, so she's moving forward. It looks like some outside forces or some group of people, an organization that she has absolutely no control over is coming out of nowhere and trying to knock her direction off course. She's, she's just standing there. She's not moving. She's just standing there. So maybe it's suggesting forward momentum, more putting one foot in front of another, small steps. Because if you just stand there and wait for the inevitable to happen, yeah. Don't be surprised when it does. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can walk away. You can sidestep. You can anticipate whatever this unexpected event is or, or, or something and, and move away and avert the potential future that you were dreaming about. And when I said good about the car crash, I wasn't being evil there. Sometimes... We need our lives to be in total chaos to learn and grow more. I've actually learned that, you know, when everything, as I said before, I think, when everything's going smoothly, we don't tend to progress as human beings. We don't become wiser. Hmm. Sometimes when everything's up in the air, that's when we really, really find out who we are and what we want. And if what we're experiencing isn't what we want, we realize what we do so that you take a positive from that. And and do remember, you know, that you, you know, if things are thrown up in the air, they will fall back into place. But sometimes they need to be thrown up to fall into place. Like you need to be <laughs> lost to find yourself, if you know what I mean. So don't, don't fear, you know, crisis points in life. Actually start getting excited about them because they are a mighty opportunity to grow. And if you're not growing, you're really not living. You know, we are here to face our fears, 
to make ourselves feel uncomfortable on a regular basis because that's how we grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's true. And, and to keep our minds open, there's that wonderful metaphor, isn't it, of a parachute, an open parachute. And um, what happens if the parachute closes and you're going to crash, aren't you? It's the same <laughs> with your mind. Keep your mind open. That keeps you afloat. I have a couple more questions, and unfortunately, our time is flying by. Uh, there is uh, someone in the chat room that, that um, and it, it was one of my questions I was going to ask anyway, uh, Guardian, Jackpot, I love that, uh, says, I consider dreams of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the future to be form of a time travel or, or of information. Uh, so real quick, when I was a kid, I remember having a dream about we were on vacation. Uh, my uncle had a dog that was kind of like my best friend. We used to, every time he, I, he was around, he loved me. I loved him. And this, I, I dreamt about this dog. People were trying to kill it. And I was just like, oh my God, what, what is going on? And I woke up and I told my dad, I was probably eight, dad, we got to call Uncle Jim because you know, the do this dog, I, don't, I think it was Dandy or something like that. Uh, you know, somebody's trying to kill it. I just want to check on him. And he's like, oh, we'll call later. Well, then he called later and asked my, he's like, oh, Tony wants to know about Dandy. And uh, and he said, oh, unfortunately, I had to put him to sleep. Um, so mm -hmm. dreams of the future or dreams of something like that, there is somewhat of a connection um, spiritually. I don't know how we, you know, this another being connected with me. But can you talk about that, about future, you know, predictions and, and just connections with another spirit? Absolutely. And I have gone full circle on this because obviously um, when I started writing about dreams, most dream dictionaries were... Uh, um, uh, precognitive you know that if you dream of this that mm -hmm. will happen and I remember with my publisher Harper Collins they didn't want that they wanted the more psychological the Jungian oh, right. approach, which is what I took but what I'm finding now several decades later is sleep and dream research is actually more and more going back to dreams being potentially precognitive mm. and that precognitive dream experience that wonderful deja reve that you have the next day you think i've been here before right in a dream or like you had what a, what an incredible dream and i'm so sorry about the poor doggy i love doggies <laughs> right. but um it it they are the norm and not the exception and i'm now come full circle that i believe every dream also has a precognitive element so that's why it is so important to write them down. And if there is something concerning in your dream, like you see harm being done to yourself or to someone else or something like happening, it is worth just checking it out or reaching out to someone mm -hmm. you've dreamt about. You know, there's no harm doing that. Um, the overwhelming majority of cases, dreams will not be literal like that, but sometimes they can be so what you need is proof. You need to write them down. You need to act like a scientist. There's no point after the event because people will say, well, you're just, you know, this, you're just making this up. It's all hindsight. You need to have a time and a date stamp. And when you start noticing that your dreaming mind is giving you potential futures, this is very, very exciting for you because it shows that what you're dreaming about is a potential future and if it's a very negative scenario you have the ability in the present to change that potential future by changing your thoughts and your feelings and your actions hmm. in your case obviously the 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 dog had died already so you were kind of picking up on something there that had already happened there was nothing that you could have been could have done so i don't hmm. want people to panic and think well i dreamt it therefore it's my fault this happened it's right. not outside of your control but i think with precognitive dreaming where the future is is almost they're like a manifesting tool because if you dream about a future that makes you feel i don't like this i don't want this to happen um 
it's like a wake up call. It's saying, well, this is the future, your current mindset, because remember your dreaming mind is dreaming about your current mindset right. symbolically. If you don't like it, what future you're attracting right now with your current mindset, change it, create a different future. I do think that our dreams are often potential futures because they're showing how our current mindset is attractive, what, what it's attracting into our lives. Hmm. But then again, there are those wonderful examples like you give, and I have so many people write to me about that, that they have dreamt of someone who's passed, and then the next morning they wake up and it's happened. What is going on there? Um, although that defies all the rules, of dream decoders like me and my research, I absolutely love it because it once again shows that your the dreaming mind never fails to mm. intrigue, inspire, and open you up to even more possibilities. Um, so you can stick with your dreams as a psychological self-help tool, or you can use them as a manifesting tool to see what mm. future you're potentially attracting, or you can see them as pure precognition you know, and, and if that's the case, you only know, sadly, after the event, whether you had a precognitive dream It only happens is, is if that event plays out. Right. But as I said, if it's a very negative event, there are things you can do potentially in the present to avert it. Not if it's like on a global scale, like right. you know, I remember with <laughs> the Twin Towers, lots of people reported they had oh, these yeah. dreams. But there are dream databases where actually um, precognitive dreamers report um, dreams that they've had and they are studying them and I think that's really exciting and I touched on this in the premonition code to have kind of like global dream database to see what people are dreaming about before major events and I'm telling you before the lockdowns before the pandemic a lot of people were dreaming of viruses of wearing masks there was kind of like a collective global dream happening and talking about collective dreaming, actually, it just flashed up on my phone. I saw it, that um, Nicolas Cage movie, Dream Scenario, hmm. is streaming today. Oh, wow. And it pops up in everyone's dream. You are so intuitive, Tony. Not only is it World Sleep Day, but they've gone and released that today, too. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. See, this was... I have uh... seen it. It's called Nicolas Cage Dream Scenario. He's basically a family man, I'm reading now, who suddenly finds himself appearing in everybody's dreams at night. Today and must have been one of those, uh, uh, somebody needed to hear this today, so. Global celebrity because he's in everybody's dreams. Wow. wow. <laughs> you picked the right day to talk to me. I That's love it. hilarious. <laughs> well, it's always the right day, Teresa. It's always the right day to talk oh, to you. So. But the one thing I want people listening is to love their dreams. Because yeah. if you do fall in love with your dreams, even the bizarre, wonky ones or the mundane, boring ones or the horrific ones, you're actually falling in love with aspects of your psyche, right? And and mm -hmm. accepting them and seeing what they can teach you, learning that all aspects of your psyche are either lessons or blessings. And that really is the road to a wonderful life mm -hmm. um, because you actually understand yourself, you're self-aware, and that can lead to self-love, hopefully. And when you have that in place, self-awareness and self-love, that's when you start attracting wonderful things. And if they're not wonderful, you learn from them and grow right. again. So it's a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> well, Teresa, do you do you uh, do one-on-ones with people? I don't actually. I'm a serial author. I mean, I've got three titles coming out this year again. Wow. Um, but I'm starting to be asked to do um, workshops, actually. Uh, Olympia over here in the UK have invited me to talk on the main stage That's and teach wonderful. a dream decoding workshop and action coach. I've been asked by business people actually using dream power in the workplace. That's amazing. Wow, what wonderful times we live in that yeah. dream work is, but dream work, as I say, it's the door. Right to the psychic world and it's a way to talk to people about their inner psychic their mysterious abilities without causing any alarm because however skeptical or dismissive a person is they will still have had that dream that they'd kind of like someone to help them and offer clarity on them and that's where i come in and i find once they start working on their dreams or i i say to someone actually who doesn't believe in any psychic abilities or anything mysterious about life i say Give me 20 of your dreams and then let's have a chat. 
I'm telling you, every time that's happened, by the end, they're like, there's something in this. <laughs> My goodness, there's too much insight here. How did I know that? Why did I dream of that? Um, my goodness, I dreamt of this person and they texted me the next day. What is going on? And we see how the synchronicities as well through dream work. So that's a great thing I do with skeptics now when they dismiss it all as pseudoscience or right. nonsense. <laughs> get him, say, Teresa, just, get him. <laughs> I, just, I do. I say, give me 20, 20 dreams. Because you do need, because again, I, I say this a lot, dreams work as a series. Don't focus on just the one dream. Right. We all have these standout dreams, but they're like key episodes in a Netflix drama we love. You know, there's always an episode better than the rest. Right. But you need other episodes, don't you, to understand it. And and that's what your dreams. Well, the wonderful thing about your dreams, it's, it's never ending. It's you, the story of you, the infinite story of you ongoing. And the more you can shape those dreams, incubate dreams, doing things that you always wanted to do in your dream life, that maybe your physical life you can't, like you want to fly or go to space, you can in the dream world. If you have that sense of infinite possibility, you wake up with a dream and you just feel, oh my goodness, what a wonderful dream. I want to go back to sleep and continue it. <laughs> I'm telling you, your waking life will match up. Happy dreams, happy life. I'm telling you, work on them, right? I, even, I totally agree. I or totally exciting get... dreams. And instead of saying, oh, I had a horrible dream, like a nightmare, say exciting dream, weird dream. Instead of weird, use the word profound. <laughs> 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 profound life, right? Yeah. So always look at it like that. You're, you're, you know, and if you're kind of like find your dreams tedious or, or not illuminating, think about what you're doing in the day. Are you going for walks in nature? Are you living in the moment? Are you listening to music you love? Actually, listening to music is a great way to trigger dream recall because you talked about the left and right side of the brain. Music is the one thing we do where both sides of our brain are working in harmony. They're not conflicting. Hmm. You know, the logical and rational part of us tries to make sense of the notes and the intuitive, creative part just wants to dream. And for once, they're walking side by side, doing what they do best and not trying to undermine each other, as often happens. You know, mm. <laughs> they're, they're actually working as a team. <laughs> they listen to music that gives you goosebumps. There's research into that. If you listen to music that gives you goosebumps, it's a kind of a psychic awakening. Something's going on in your brain, the part of your brain that is very receptive to psychic signals. So do that. Meditate a bit. Just two minutes is all you need. Just sit and reflect observe your thoughts that's all meditation is it's just noticing your thoughts um, um so <laughs> all these things you can do to 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 trigger more dreams <laughs> that you love that's great to to make to to make sense of and to interpret well well i have to say this has been another amazing conversation with you um People can go to your website. Uh, it's Ooh, just look, there I am. Uh, right, TeresaChung.com, <laughs> and uh, get books, and you can see media. You, you have a podcast. You have everything uh, you need there to contact her, and uh, you can go to Amazon also and pick up all her books. So, uh, if you want to decipher, decipher your dreams, please pick up these books. I think it's a great opportunity to understand on. Uh, what we were talking about today and so don't be scared of your dreams but also uh and i think it would kind of be fun to get a group of friends together and try to interpret each other's dreams but add a positive spin to it because it's sometimes it's empathy and connection it yeah. does and um you know but, but be careful when you do it because people are sharing a piece of their soul right yeah um, pick treat, the right friends to <laughs> with great respect and positivity um yeah interpreting dreams being a dream oracle because in, in ancient times wasn't it people went to the dream temples they had right. a problem and they had all these these um people who would sleep for a living <laughs> i just watched the <laughs> netflix uh um um alexander the great or alexander they just re ah. released and he went to i think an egyptian priestess that actually it was almost like a dream interpreter about his future and about and i thought that was very fascinating so 
Oh, it is. I mean, it's, it goes way back to ancient times in the Bible, dreams throughout history, yeah. dreams, you know, and it's half our life we're asleep, you know, and our brain hasn't gone to sleep. It's dreaming. We never switch off. We're switched on 24 seven. The part of our brain that is very active in the dreaming state. Mm. What is going on there? Because people used to think you sleep to rest. You don't. I think you sleep to dream. It's not sleep on it if you have a problem, it's dream on it. Because you always wonder why why we sleep anyway. It's like, oh, you need rest, but it's like, well. Have you that... seen some people, they fidget in their sleep? I know I do. I do too. I jump a lot. <laughs> I, I think because in the dreams, because I think you, we, we get tired because we urgently need to reconnect with our soul and dream. Because in the dream state, you've got to think the only thing missing really is logic and reason mm -hmm. and that's why in the dream state you can make creative connections that you simply couldn't do in the waking state because logic reason and a hefty dose of ego would stop those connections dead in their tracks and say impossible mm -hmm. the dream state it's i'm possible it's not impossible wow well i love this teresa definitely you're going to have to come back when your new books come out i would love to have you back and uh oh. Tony. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. It's always a dream to talk to you. Thank oh, you. And on uh, World Sleep Day, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Teresa Chung. Please uh, go check her out. Support her, uh, TeresaChung.com. And uh, we really appreciate her. And thank you, everybody, for you know sharing your, I know, intimate dreams with us uh, in the chat room. We really appreciate it. And uh, please share and like this show and uh, leave some great comments for us. And uh, we'd love to hear uh, how much you enjoyed today's episode. And uh, please, on Mondays, tune in for Robert Hensley's show with Minutemen Report. Bonnie Burkhardt uh, on Wednesdays with Truth Be Told Transformation. Of course, me every Friday right here uh, on Truth Be Told. And uh, until next time, I'm Tony Sweet. Take care of yourself and each other and uh, have a great week. This has been another episode of Truth Be Told. Thank you so much for watching. Recorded live at UBN Go Studios in Burbank, California. Join us on social media. Facebook, Truth Be Told Radio. Instagram, Truth Be Told Paranormal. Go to Truth Be Told Worldwide for more information on upcoming shows.